So what is the difference between Hermeticism and Christian mysticism? How are they different? How do they compare? Can you even put the two in the same conversation in a productive way? Coming up in this video. So I think of Hermeticism as sort of the backbone of the Western esoteric tradition. And esoteric, in contrast with exoteric, means more the teachings of a few, more leans towards inner teachings, and more the teachings of the priestly class, or uh, as opposed to uh, the mainstream masses and the exoteric tradition could in many ways be all the rules and, and principles and rituals and whatever forms any sort of religion takes in its most kind of exterior public form. So esoteric, more private, exoteric, more public. And the mystical traditions in all the major three monotheistic faiths, I think they all tend towards Hermeticism. Hermeticism very much rests on uh, the adage, as above, so below, but um, basically matching up the micro and the macro, and good and evil, or light and dark, or yin and yang, uh, all balancing each other out. Obviously, in, in their conventional forms, the three monotheistic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, very much take a kind of uh, moralism or judgment or one side versus the other. There's definitely a sense of separation. Uh, Hermeticism wants to find the center balancing point. I think in that way it's very much uh, a friend of the East and uh, also a friend of people like Carl Jung and Ken Wilber who kind of integrate ideas from uh, different perspectives. It's basically a kind of non-dual uh, monism. Uh, everything is you and everything is God all at the same time and it's all um, kind of reflecting and corresponding back in on itself as the different levels and layers of experience and states and reality, uh, internal and external, uh, take form. So Hermeticism in terms of Christian mysticism, I think a lot of Christian mysticism is starting to go towards a more kind of hermetic view. Um, you have contemporary Christian mystics obviously uh, using kind of integral ideas and ideas that are trying to put things together. You, you're hearing more talk about non-duality. You're even hearing talk that's always kind of been in the tradition. So I think the, the mystical branches of those three faiths definitely tend towards uh, basically a friend of Hermeticism. I think Hermeticism can differ from those three very much in the sense that, well, for one, it uses the elements and emphasizes the elements. And I certainly haven't heard a whole lot of that in Christian mysticism. Uh, and, and, and that could be more of an organizational concern. I mean, obviously, if you track Hermetic uh, alchemist, you certainly have some overlap with with monks, you know, Albert the Great, Thomas Aquinas, uh, and then some Paracelsus, Giordano Bruno, people that were, you know, they got into some trouble. Uh, but, but you know, they talked about that kind of stuff as well. Raymond Lull from Spain, uh, another one. So there, there's very much in, in some of those alchemists in the medieval times and the Renaissance times, there's very much a kind of blending of Christian mysticism with Hermeticism. And you even see some of that with like uh, the Rosicrucians and stuff. 
So, um, but I, I, I think one of the keys that Hermeticism brings in is it brings in basically uh, paganism, which is, you know, based on nature and seasons and cycles and uh, the divine feminine and Hermetic uh, uh, philosophy does a real good job on bringing all that in so that, you know, that's equally as valuable as the monotheistic faiths. Uh, all the nature-based stuff, and so, so I mean, I definitely think there's there's some overlap there, and there's some similarities. Uh, I think that as far as Franz Barden's Hermetics, there's just a whole lot of kind of self-empowerment and developing uh, your deepest sense of power with all the practices and with all the elements. And, you know, in Christian mysticism, you, you get a lot of just kind of surrendering to God, letting go, uh, getting out of your own way type of thing. Self-will can even kind of get a bad rap. Uh, and I mean, in a lot of different sectors, but it can it can get a bad rap in, in Christianity sometimes because that's what's getting in the way of God. They'll talk about self-will uh, in terms of more like an ego or a need to just kind of gratify instant desires. Uh, whereas Barden and even Crowley and, and some of those people, you know, they'll talk about the will as, as your deepest kind of want, your deepest desire, your deepest uh, intent uh, in a positive way. You know, it's, it's kind of the the arrow shooting out from the depths of your soul, in a sense, is, is will. And it's meant to be strengthened and employed and developed. And then you'll also see in paganism the idea that uh, you, you get in touch with yourself and then the, you find yourself in, in the whole world outside of yourself. So there's, there's a kind of uh, self-emphasis that probably fits pretty well with American and Western individualism and, and the way we have uh, our emphasis on psychology. I mean, I think it, it, there's, there's been some challenges in trying to integrate Western psychology with more of the traditional, especially medieval kind of monotheistic faiths in the West. Uh, but I think some of the more pagan ideas, if, if you even want to call them pagan, or uh, magic, or occult, or shamanic, uh, or even just indigenous, uh, however you want to think about it, a lot of that really fits with Western individuality. And a lot of the craving I think people have to uh, really maximize their potential and uh, not, not limit themselves by uh, beliefs that may have been kind of a result of developmental conditioning. So I think Hermetics goes very well with all of that. And it's both transcendent and imminent. You know, I think that Western monotheism puts the emphasis on transcendence uh, and, and where the paganism or the Tantra, and it, it's, it's kind of a way to think of Vedanta versus Tantra too, you know, transcendence versus imminence, you know, the what's beyond versus what's right here, right now, um, you know, what's outside of the physical and then what's in the depths of the physical. And Hermetics deals with both in a way uh, that I think is, is very, very complete, very complete, and matches up. And, and one of the other things I love about Barden is he just really matched up a lot of stuff with yoga and a lot of stuff with uh, the East very well with kind of the backbone of Western Hermeticism. So uh, the, the other thing I wanted to say before uh, we, we wind this up is as far as the elements, you know, I, I also kind of break down the four elements along the two poles of kind of self-power versus surrender of self to God power. And by that I mean I would put air and water as kind of dissolving the self 
or the self sense or the form of the self. Air and water, you know, they'll take the shape uh, of basically wherever they're put, the container they're put in. So they're kind of just dissolving and letting go until they rest up against uh, something where they can't go any further. Whereas fire and earth, I think, are more of the form, and they're more the form of the self. Even if you want to see fire as, as will, as desire, as life, vitality, and earth, obviously your physical form and all, all that we know now about biology and anatomy. So I kind of break down that, that pole as well, um, you know, with the four elements in that way. And that really helped me start to understand uh, what Barden was getting at with a lot of the exercises around the elements as well. So I hope you like this. And in a second, I'll tell you about uh, my new store. I don't know if, if you have an altar of your own or you have any interest in kind of cultivating a space uh, inside your living situation for spiritual practices, but I found that magical objects, spiritual objects, altars, places to pray, kind of setting the atmosphere is just makes all the difference in the world, especially when you're going deep into stuff. And I have a, a store, and I'm going to put it on the link below, where you can get all sorts of different uh, magical objects that you may not know where to find them otherwise, but uh, you can order them and they'll be there in a few days. So, I mean, just check it out. I mean, if you like it, it is one way to support uh, what's going on here and to keep my videos going. All right. Take care, my friends.